All right, managing a machine learning team. So, um, machine, managing machine learning teams is really hard, and I'm going to talk about a couple reasons why. The first is it's really hard to tell in advance how easy or hard the problem that you're working on is. Um, so this is an example um, from uh, Lucas, one of the other founders of Weights and Biases. And so this is from a, a Kaggle competition that they ran. I forget what the task was, but this is the, the accuracy, how the accuracy improved over the first week of the competition, right? So one week of trying, accuracy goes from 30% you know, to 70%, right? So that's great, right? And you might think that like, yeah, we're gonna solve this task next week. Like we, we just doubled our performance and next week is gonna be the week we're gonna get completely done. Um, but if you zoom out and look at how the accuracy changed over the first three months of the project, um, it actually barely went up after that. So almost all of the performance gains were in the first week of this Kaggle competition. And so you might say like, oh yeah, people just realized that the problem was solved and so they stopped working on it. But um, that's not the case. This is the, the graph of the number of participating teams as the competition went, went on. So actually almost everyone was submitting their, um, was sort of joining this competition later on. So the implication of this is, it's really hard to tell in advance whether a problem is gonna be easier or hard. And just because you make a lot of progress on your problem this week, doesn't mean that you're more likely to next week. Um, related to that, I think uh, machine learning progress is nonlinear. So one thing that I think is very common is for machine learning projects to stall entirely for weeks or longer, right? You, um, you get to a certain level of performance and then you try a bunch of things and none of those things work and your performance is exactly the same as you were when you started. Or um, you're just too burdened by technical debt and you can't make progress and you have to go back and refactor your code base. That takes two weeks and you can't even get back to the same performance that you were at two weeks ago. Um, and so in the early stages of a project, it's very difficult to plan because it's unclear what's going to work. Um, and so I think you know, the, the way to think about this is that production ML, even sort of ML engineering, is still somewhere in between research and engineering. Um, another reason why managing ML teams is hard is that you know, ML teams are often a collaboration between research and um, engineering, and there are big cultural gaps between those two ways of looking at the world. So, um, oftentimes, researchers think, think the thing that's important is like novelty and exciting new models and, um, you know, and writing really nice reports. And engineers think the thing that matters is like having really clean code and um, building things that are scalable. And those two worldviews don't, um, don't always align. So there's, there's even like a completely different value set that exists between those those two cultures. And in a lot of organizations, when this doesn't work well, it's because the two sides of that equation don't really value each other. Like researchers think research is important and engineering is all easy. And engineers think engineering is the only thing that matters and researchers all have their heads in the clouds. Um, and uh, so that, that can be hard to get right. And then lastly, um, leaders, and we've touched on this a little bit, but leaders often don't understand machine learning. So how can you think about managing machine learning teams better? Um, the first point I wanna make is, I think the way that you need to do ML project planning is to do it probabilistically. So what do I mean by that? Um, I think if you look at a typical like engineering um, work planning, um, you might set up a, like a sort of waterfall like this, right, where you have um, some tasks that you ultimately wanna do, and then you have a bunch of tasks that that task depends on, and you sort of map how long it's gonna to take to do each of those tasks and how they build up to each other. So you understand you know, your dependencies and then you can figure out when you're gonna be able to work on each part of the problem. But for machine learning, I think you need to take into account your uncertainty estimates around each of the ideas that you're trying into your project plan. So a machine learning project plan might look something more like this, right? You might have like a task, like task D that you ultimately wanna do, um, but then you might have a couple of different ways of approaching it, right? So you might have task A, and task A would allow you to do task D, but there's only a 50% chance that you're gonna get it right. And so in parallel, you might also try task B and task C, um, which are an alternative way of achieving what you were gonna achieve with task A, um, but you don't know which of them is gonna work. And so like, let's say you get through the first week, um, your project plan is probably gonna change a lot for machine learning projects. So for example, you might realize like, well, you know, we tried task C for a week and you know, turns out it's actually impossible. Like, 
we thought we had the data, the data's really bad, we give up. Um, and then, you know, task B, it's like, well, maybe we were working on task B and, you know, the original idea that we had, the original model we implemented didn't do very well, but like our researchers think that if they just try this one more, um, this one more neural net architecture, it'll finally work. So you might just push back the timeline. And then, you know, another week might go by and it might turn out that task B and task C were both impossible and you might need to replan um, what it'll take you to get to task D. So doing machine learning project planning probabilistically, I think, is important to managing ML teams. A corollary of that is um, it's important to uh, sort of, I don't think that you should have any path critical research projects. And so what I mean by that is if there's something that you need in order to solve, like to meet the objective of your team, then you need to have different hypotheses about how you might solve that task. Um, that doesn't mean that you need to work on all of them in parallel. Um, but I think that a lot of good teams do work on many of them in parallel. And um, that takes sort of a very particular mindset, which is um, like you want, if you're working on a bunch of ideas in parallel that all sort of map to the same goal, right? So if you have three engineers that are all working on different models to try to, um, to, try to achieve the best performance on the same task, then um, you need to sort of treat it as a friendly competition of ideas. And so you need to have a culture that's built around um, getting to the right answer, not, not around who got to the right answer. Um, and so I think one way that, um, one thing that you need to have in place in order to do that is to measure your progress, um, is to like stop measuring your progress of like an indiv individual um, contributor based on their results. Um, you know, in the long term you can do this, right? Like if someone works on the team for two years and none of their ideas ever make it into production, that's probably a bad sign. But on an individual progress level, um, individual project level, I think it's important to measure their progress based on their inputs. So, you know, what did you set out to try? And then did you try it? And how well were you able to execute on that thing? Um, and so I think it's important to measure based on that, not based on whether that thing actually worked. Um, having researchers and engineers work closely together, I think is important. Um, which, you know, this is a way of avoiding the failure mode of thinking either research is more important or engineering is, uh, is more important. We've mentioned this a couple of times in this course already, but it's worth repeating. Getting end-to-end -end pipelines together quickly and putting them into, into production as fast as possible um, can give you, um, this does a couple of things for you. It makes the task itself a lot more likely to be successful because you can sort of create a, um, a data flywheel and um, you can see how well your predictions correspond to, um, to actual business value, which makes it much easier to communicate your progress to leadership. And then lastly, it's, I think, important to sort of educate the leadership of your company if you're not in an ML first company um, on sort of how ML projects are different than engineering pro um, projects. And so I think a lot of the onus is here, here is on leadership to like really make an effort to grasp these technologies and how they're different. That said, um, I do think ML teams bear some responsibility for, um, for doing a good job of communicating their progress. Um, so, you know, I think like you hear a lot of status updates for machine learning projects that sound something like, you know, all right, this week we improved our cat detection model from 60% to 80%. Um, that's great, like 20% increase in accuracy. Um, and we have a lot of ideas about how to continue to improve from here. And so next week, we're going to make our model even bigger, and our accuracy is going to go up, and we're going to solve cat detection. Right? So how many, how many think that's a good like, status update to share with? No one? All right, what's, what's wrong with it? The, the forward-looking statement. The forward-looking statement, yeah. What else is wrong with it? Yep, nothing business-specific about it. Anything else that's wrong with it? Isn't cat detection already solved? No, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. <laughs> cat detection is not solved. Um, I think like the core. I think you've sort of touched on the core. The core issues with this type of this type of uh, progress report, right? It's like you're you're um, you're communicating to leadership in terms that you understand, not that they understand, right? Like 60% accuracy to 80% accuracy. That sounds really cool for you, but what does that mean for the business? Um, I think. Um, 
projecting like forward looking projections based on results from the past week are really dangerous to do in ML. So like we have a lot of ideas. So we're confident that we're going to make progress. Um, you might, that might be a good way of like sort of communicating down to the team to keep people motivated. But I think it's a really terrible way of communicating up because then people will sort of hold you to that kind of thing. And you never actually really know. Um, so I think, you know, it's worth thinking about for our, um, our cat detection project, what would be a better way of communicating that status update to leadership? And then the last thing on this topic is, um, you know, I think there's sort of a, like a dearth of resources for um, educating non-technical people on machine learning. There are a couple that I like, um, but I think there's opportunity to do something better here. Um, one is this kind of series of videos from, um, from a venture capital fund that I think are pretty, pretty good and pretty accessible, but they're a little bit old. And then um, Peter is teaching an AI strategy class through the business school um, maybe now or in the next couple months. And so whenever those lectures are online, I, I, I'm guessing that will be a really good resource as well. Um, any questions about this? Should we, should we do questions like off video and start miking um, Xavier up? We can do that. Just to, it's getting late, yeah. Sure. You're a loud person, you can. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So yeah, let's just um, do questions, but we'll be unmiking potentially. So. Should I, let me, why don't I just go through um, the hiring section? Oh you, oh, you still have another section? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Let's just do that. All right.